So right now I am uh, against New York in a in a blood red background because uh, today my guest is Suzanne Muldowney, who is here on Valentine's Day. So uh, hi, Suzanne. You said uh, that you're excited about today's uh, show, right? Um, yes, I'm very much excited. But you also said you were a little bit scared. Why? Um, because I hope I get my message uh, through clearly without making any, uh, well, foolish mistakes. Ah, uh, Suzanne, you're not about foolish mistakes. You just present the information to the people. That's all. Yes. Uh, it's Valentine's Day. Um, I know it's the the feast of St. Valentine and St. Valentine was originally known for, he would marry people, even though that the, that they wouldn't want them to get married and uh, they put him to death because of that, right? Um, yes, but the way I read it in one of the religion books, there was a, uh, an illustration of a man inside a prison. He was at a window uh, passing a piece of paper out the window to uh, to a waiting boy uh, who ran off with it somewhere. So they said he was a priest. He was jailed for marrying people. Oh, illegally marrying people. Illegally marrying people. But he thought, like, you're illegally marrying people to the law, but not against the law of God. So he was going to marry people no matter what. Without, but um, without considering the, uh, the uh, church element. Yes. Well, I guess it was desperate time. I, I have to do a little bit more research on that. But in any case, this is also another monumentous occasion. It was on Valentine's Day that one of the most popular Dracula dramatizations premiered, Bela Lugosi's movie. It was, it was on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 1931. Today is the 90th anniversary. Wow. I, I mean, you know, I was always wondering why they would wait till Valentine's Day to uh, put out this movie. It's kind of scary. Some posters called it uh, uh, one of the eeriest love stories. Did you find it to be kind of a love, a love story? Well, the two women who were Dracula's victims in the movie and, and also in uh, Stoker's novel uh, were in love with other men. Uh, one of them uh, married her fiancé, but the other one was killed off before she could get married. Spoilers. Oh, how is this a love story? The uh, the two principal um, women in the story uh, are in love with other men, and, okay. and they're both committed to the other men. All right, and I guess Dracula is the villain in this situation, but he is He's very an popular. intruder. Yes, yes. They, they, uh, I remember also another movie, The Silence of the Lambs, um, was another horror movie that came out on Valentine's Day also. Which year? Luckily for me, we have smartphones that will tell me the answer. In the United States of America, The Silence of the Lambs came out on February 14th, 1991. 1991, Suzanne. I, I heard. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, so is there anything else that you would like to tell? How can people best celebrate this holiday then? Well, you have to be more specific. What are you celebrating on... Valentine's Day. If if it's uh, if it's the fact that it's the 90th anniversary of Bela Lugosi's Dracula movie, then uh, um, you probably wear dark clothing, uh, dim the lights, and uh, and and drink um, red soft drinks. Will you be doing that? Yes. Ah, very good. So you're always you always got something cool to celebrate. So very good. So will will they be uh, showing it on television or anything like that? No. Uh, all right. Well, it, but I know you could still you could still honor it in your mind just as well. Yes. Um. Well, I've, I've, I've seen the Lugosi movie uh, a number of times, and I've compared it with the Stoker novel, and I've, I've found many mistakes. Okay, like what? Um, 
well, well, Dracula himself uh, is dressed all wrong. He's in a contemporary uh, tuxedo with cape when uh, actually um, uh, visitors from other lands did not change their wardrobes to blend with the societies they visited. They kept their native garb. So uh, um, in my case, I, I wear um, the... Uh, the medieval doublet and and hose, um, the uh, the tunic with my coat of arms on it, and uh, uh-huh. and and two different capes. Sometimes a red one, sometimes a black one. Mm. Which one would you wear this time if you could? Um, this ninetieth um, anniversary uh, speak of a special color or special item. Ninetieth anniversary. Um, I, I'd wear the black. Okay. But what is the 90th anniversary? Is it like, is it a certain jewel? Is it a certain thing? What, what, what would they, what would No, get? there are, there are no special, uh, symbols for a 90th anniversary. Oh, uh, the, the, the symbols, the symbols go only as far as 60, anything 61 or higher, um, is uh, is always diamonds. Okay, so all right, so I guess diamonds this time around, uh, and definitely for ten years for the hundredth. Oh yes, um, now that I'm because of the pandemic, uh, uh, I can't do a, a live performance for the anniversary, unlike uh, I did forty years ago for the fiftieth anniversary. But ten years from now, I've just got to be able to. Uh, uh, do a live performance and uh, and other um, Dracula spectaculars throughout the year um, 2031 because in that in that year uh, the real Dracula the historical Dracula Vod the Impaler will be 600 years old. Wow! So you'll have two anniversaries on your hands. You'll have a 600 anniversary of Vlad the Impaler and a hundredth anniversary of the Bram Stoker, uh, the movie version, right? One of the movie versions, yes. One of the movie, would you say this is your favorite uh, movie version? No, it isn't. Ooh, what is your favorite? The one that, um, the one that follows uh, Stoker's novel rather accurately, but make sure to include uh, uh, Stoker's research on Vlad the Impaler, which Bela Lugosi's movie did not, and many other dramatizations did not, uh, is the uh, is the, uh, the the movie version with uh, uh, yeah, what? Sorry, I sneezed. Go ahead. With with Gary Oldman in the lead. Yes, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was called. Yeah, uh, Dracula. Uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yes. Sure. Yes. That is the most, so you saw, did you see that one in the theater or did you see that one on television? I saw it on television. And you liked it. You thought it was very good, very accurate. Um, I liked the material more because, uh, because it went to the beginning with the, uh, with the real life Dracula. Okay. What would you say the worst Dracula film was? The worst dramatization? Yeah, the worst Dracula movie. Would you say it's Love at First Bite with the? Uh... No, that was uh, that was uh, insulting uh, to uh, the the nation of Romania. Okay. Yeah, George Hamilton was not a good uh, Dracula. Which I, I think Artie Johnson as Renfield. I think Artie Renfield was very good. Um, well, speaking of Renfield, that's that's a mistake that was in uh, the Bela Lugosi movie. Um, the story opens with a British real estate agent going to Castle Dracula to negotiate the purchase of um, a British estate uh, for the Count. In the Bela Lugosi movie, that's Renfield, but in but in uh, 
But in the novel, no, that's not, uh, it's not Renfield. Renfield does appear later on as a mental patient, but he is not the real estate agent who goes out at the beginning. That's Jonathan Harker. Jonathan Harker and Renfield are two different characters. Uh huh. So they pushed them together for, I guess, uh, brevity's sake or something like that to make it, I don't know, convenience. I don't know. Um, but 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 that but that was one of the uh, many mistakes I found. Hmm. Okay. Any other mistakes that you'd like to point out? Yes, the worst mistake in uh, um, the Bella Gozi movie was was failure to mention uh, the real life Dracula when the anti vampire posse is is planning its uh, course of action. Okay, tell me about it. So this was in the 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 the, the Bella Lugosi version. Um, no, um, in, in the novel, the anti-vampire posse consists of six people headed by, uh, Professor Van Helsing, um, the expert on the, uh, bizarre. Um, he explains, um, the modus operandi, um, of vampires, uh, and then he says, oh, this one is very clever. He must have, indeed, been that five-vote Dracula who won his name against the Turk. In the mm -hmm. Bela Lugosi movie, there's none of that. Right, they, they, they leave all that out. That, well, that's what set a very bad uh, precedent for, for many other uh, Dracula dramatizations. The omission of the story behind the story in time led people to think that Dracula was purely fictional and made all sorts of false connections um, uh, to bad things. So that, um, so that um, when I started portraying him, uh, um, some of my worst critics, including my whole family, said, but that's strictly a work of fiction! And I had to I had to explain to them about about the real life Dracula, and they and the and and they were stunned. So when you told them about the real Vlad the Impaler, who had been in the in the Crusades and all that stuff, so did they leave you alone about that? No, they um, they they shamed me for having gone further. Um, below the surface, so to speak. And they also denounced the historians, Rado Florescu and uh, Raymond McNally. But why? I mean, I mean, seriously, they did, they did the research. And on top of that, Vlad the Impaler was part of the, the Crusades, which was a religious sort of thing. Yes. So why would they be against that? Because it involves Dracula, a supposedly uh, villainous prototype. Hmm. I mean, now note, uh, Vlad the Impaler's hands were by far not even, you know, even more bloody, but but yeah, I, I see what they're talking about. Um, there's also another, another mistake in the Lugosi movie, but which I think also happens in the standard stage play. Um, um, in the movie, Dracula offers the real estate agent some wine. I think in the stage play, uh, some inhabitants of the house offer Dracula wine, and he says, "I never drink wine." Um, the the bringing forth and offering of the wine and turning it down. Um, Bram Stoker never wrote those words. So they just added that. It's kind of like joking yes. to drink wine. Because like implying that he drinks something else. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Any other stuff? Um... Um, when when Mina, the second victim, uh, uh, tells 
her husband, Jonathan Harker, about a strange dream she had about a white face um, uh, appearing before her and her sensing the next morning that she was drained of strength. Um, she's she's a very slow, um, a, a very slow narrator, a very slow commentator. So, Mina, in the book or in the movie? In the movie. Okay, she's talking too slow. You don't like it. What would you have preferred? Um, well, that, 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 that she didn't pause a number of times and, uh, and, and, and got to the point sooner. You think she was pausing for dramatic effect? What? Was she pausing for dramatic effect? I don't know. Okay. All right. Is there any other stuff that we should know about this before uh, we wrap this up? Um, um, in the Lugosi movie, Dracula's killed while he's still in London, when in, whereas in the novel, uh, when he realizes he's been um, defeated by the posse who know how to pursue him in any um, length, he returns uh, to his homeland, and and he's uh, a band of gypsies has has him in his box. They're rushing for the sunset uh, to get him back to the castle when the anti-vampire posse takes over and finishes him off. Um, um, well, uh, it's better in the novel because um, because uh, because Dracula is finished off uh, at dusk. Uh huh. When 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 he's just about to wake up again, um, um, uh, Doctor McNally is very critical of the dramatizations that have uh, Dracula finished off at daybreak. He, he says it's much better drama um, for the uh, pursuers and the supporters to be racing for the sunset. That's better drama. Okay. All right, but that's just that's just his opinion, right? So that's just a, a story trope that they used that they could have went along a little bit more with the book. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Suzanne, thank you so much for your your splendid uh, review and uh, talking about the good points and the bad points of Dracula that is now celebrating the the Dracula movie. With Bella Lugosi. The, the, the one, the one with Bella Lugosi. You gotta, you gotta remember it's Bella Lugosi's movie and not some other renowned uh, impersonators movie or maybe, maybe several movies. Okay. All right, you got it, Suzanne. Uh huh. All right, fantastic. All right, anything else that we should talk about before we go? Um. Um, I'm my my dance version of the novel is far more accurate than uh, uh, so many movies are. All right. So uh, we do have clips from the the Dracula archive that you have performed on the Checkerboard Kids show, so we could definitely take a look back to some of those old clips. So great. Yeah. yeah yes. Yes. But the, but the Dracula archives is a solo dance. I had to make it a solo dance because I, I started by creating a dance version of Stoker's novel. Now, that would have required a number of dancers, and uh, every dance company that I brought the idea to uh, rejected it, so I was left on my own. I'm sorry about that. All right. Well, I'm sure that, well, we could still enjoy the things that you have done, so we appreciate uh -huh. it. We appreciate that that it's been saved by time, and so that we have this, so that we could look back at your. Uh, I think it was for the. Was it for the? You were. It was for Bella Lugosi's anniversary or his birthday or something like that, right? One time I no. One time I did it on Checkerboard Kids for the fiftieth anniversary of uh, um, Lugosi's death, but. Uh, 
but 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 the greatest performance of it was uh, August sixteenth, nineteen ninety seven, which was part of a uh, a Dracula convention celebrating the hundredth anniversary of the book, and that's the one that the historian saw. Ah, uh, okay. Well, at least we could see a, a, at least a little bit of it. So I appreciate that. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Suzanne. I hope you have a very good Valentine's Day. Hey, thank you. Uh, you too. Thank you so much. Take care. Right. Bye bye.